Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and we just had big news today in kind of the Blizzard Diablo 4 universe because Diablo 4 is a very new game in that universe. And we have a judge rejecting the FTC's attempted delay of the $70 billion Microsoft Activision blockbuster deal. So I'm just going to talk about some of the context surrounding this and some of the numbers involved and the stock prices and how this could affect Diablo 4 and all of that just to keep you in the loop here on the channel. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first off, just a quick recap of what has been happening regarding this is back in early 2022, we got news of Microsoft attempting to acquire Activision Blizzard, and they were doing so by paying $95 a share, which ended up being just short of $70 billion. It was about $68.7 billion for Microsoft to attempt and just acquire Activision Blizzard, which would give them access to some very powerful IPs and revenue-generating games. Games. The most notable ones under the Activision Blizzard umbrella would be things like Candy Crush, Warcraft, Call of Duty, Diablo, and Overwatch. So then if we pull up the Activision Blizzard stock chart, this is why you see kind of recently since the announcement of this deal that it's kind of slowly been going up to that price of 95 a share where investors are starting to see that guaranteed value of that Microsoft acquisition deal. Now, Blizzard stock was struggling a lot. Now, remember, they had a bunch of PR issues and negative press coming out and their stock peaked at almost $100 a share and then it started plummeting plummeting and it went all the way down to 59 a share so back in early 2022 when this deal was announced paying 95 a share was a really really good price because the blizzard stock was on a massive tumble and that's why you see in early 2022 the stock uh, the stock started skyrocketing upward and then we started to get word that this deal was going to try to get blocked and microsoft might not be able to acquire blizzard and then the stock kind of slowly started dwindling a little bit but now it's on the rise again as we get closer to this deal and that's why if i zoom in to the daily stock chart instead of that more zoomed out one over on the far right side that's why you see that massive green bars because that judge ruled in favor of microsoft acquiring activision blizzard so now investors are flooding money into the stock to get it closer to that 95 per share price point because it's a good investment technically anything under that and then if we switch on over to the Microsoft stock chart, you can see that they peaked around 350 or so per share. And then they've been tumbling a little bit recently and their support line was about 220. And so I'd say their range of their stock is between like 220 and 350, but they've been climbing up a lot recently. And if they break 350, which it looks like they're about ready to do, their glass ceiling for stock is 350. So if Microsoft breaks that 350, they're probably going all the way to like 400 or 400. 25 or so once they break that glass ceiling and with the news of them acquiring activision blizzard might not be a bad time here to get in on some microsoft at 331 because it has a decent likelihood chance of roaring on up to 400 or so now obviously this is not financial advice i'm not telling you what to do with your money or to run out and buy anything i'm just talking about maybe some things that might be happening here as we cover this news going on it wouldn't shock me if uh if that ended up breaking that that top glass ceiling of the 345 or 350 or so with the news especially if this deal goes through of them acquiring activision blizzard and if you want kind of the two sides of the coin that were battling against each other in the New York Times article right here, you've got kind of both perspectives listed where it says Microsoft and Activision cheered the ruling that they are grateful to the court in San Francisco for the quick and thorough decision, stating that the merger would enable competition rather than allow entrenched market leaders to continue to dominate. But the other perspective here from the FTC, because they said in a statement that the agency was disappointed in the outcome, given the clear threat this merger posed to open competition in cloud gaming services and consoles. And as always with legal stuff, there's always like extra steps and appeals and stuff like that. So you've got them saying that in the coming days, they'll be announcing their next step to continue the fight to preserve competition and protect consumers. So you're going to have, uh, you're going to have people all over the place on both sides on this. The people that think it's a good thing, people that think it's a bad thing. I'm going to kind of let you choose where you fall on that. I'm just going to kind of keep you in the loop on the facts of everything going on.
And one of the big things in terms of affecting us as Diablo players is if Diablo 4 or some of these other Diablo games were to come to the Xbox Game Pass. Now, the Xbox Game Pass is typically around 25 to 30 million users right now, and it was launched in 2017, and it continues to grow at a decent pace. So we could see a big influx of new players coming into the Diablo community and willing to try out Diablo 4 if in fact Diablo 4 gets added to the Game Pass sometime soon here, like during Season 1, in time for Season 2, or something like that, I could definitely see that happening. Now, some people think it won't be added to the Xbox Game Pass because it's still a full-price $70 brand new title, but I think it definitely could be added to it, and if it is, we're going to probably see an increase in the player base. Also, something that is pretty cool with this is maybe we'll start to see some Blizzard games on the Steam client, which would give us access to much more robust reviews and also active player data because in like the microsoft xbox game studio umbrella you're able to see things like you know if you want to see how many people are playing halo grounded age of empires 4 a lot of times you can go to like the steam charts and see the reviews and the trends and, and how many players are logging in and what it all actually looks like because that data can be pretty tough to get a hold of on blizzard games we're just kind of at mercy to what blizzard tells us it's really hard for us to know like how many people are playing like when you log into diablo 4 are there a million people playing a hundred thousand people playing it's a little bit tough to actually see if you don't have access to some of the stuff like steam charts because here's some of the data that you can get from a game like Age of Empires 4 that shows up under the Microsoft umbrella in the Steam client. And it allows you to see kind of what the player trends have done. Like the player base was at like 60, 70,000 back a couple years ago. And it's had a few little spikes here and there. And it's mostly settled in to about a 15,000 player base per day. It would be super amazing if we could see this on Diablo 4. If we could see the different trends of where things are going. Because right now, all we can really do is look at things like activity on the subreddit which obviously isn't a perfect metric or we can go with like google trends and see the velocity of the web traffic revolving around diablo 4 which speaking of when we do that for diablo 4 you can see obviously like you have your spike for the beta you have your spike for the live release and all that where we hit the peak on june 6th no surprise that's when the game was fully released live no early access and all of that and then we've been kind of slowly dwindling the community and the player base until season one comes out and there'll be another spike that goes up so as of right now in terms of web traffic like google velocity it looks like diablo 4 has lost about 70 percent of its web velocity which is going to seem super alarming and it is but Honestly, it's pretty par for the course nowadays in terms of games getting super hyped up when they come out and then dropping off a little bit. As we can see here, if I switch on over to the Diablo Immortal chart, you've got the peak here on release. And then, so that's early June. Let's look at like early July early June, early July. Yep, uh, it lost about 73% of its web velocity there in the first month for Diablo Immortal. So Diablo Immortal was crashing harder than Diablo 4 in the first month. And then if we do Diablo 2, we can go over the release of Diablo 2 Resurrected, and we can see here, so that would have been, okay, early October, so let's go early November would be right there, exactly the same. It, it lost about 70% of its web velocity in the first 30 days. So we can see here, for the last three Diablo games, whether it's Diablo 2, Re uh, Resurrected, or Diablo 4, or Diablo Immortal, they're all losing about 70% of their web velocity in the first month. So now let me go back to the Diablo 4 chart and just kind of talk about some of the things and why season one could be a big deal. And that is, you know, this is pretty normal. We expected the game to lose about 60 or 70% of its web velocity in the first month. But with season one coming out, the concerning part is this chart is obviously going to spike at the release of season one. But is it going to do this and then taper off? Or is it going to do this? and then taper off. That's the thing is we don't know how many of the players it's going to bring back. Is it going to get close to that peak like it was on the global release? It's not going to surpass global release, obviously. Or is it going to be just a little mini bump and then keep dying off again? And that's where people are worried if season one is going to be good enough to bring people back and all of that. And honestly, I doubt, I would be pretty shocked if we saw uh, Diablo 4 coming to the Xbox Game Pass before Season 1. That would blow my mind. I mean, Season 1 is only like nine days away. So by the time this happens, 
we're probably looking at season two most likely maybe it takes long enough uh until season three or maybe we don't see it for a while because it's still a full price 70 dollars title which means maybe we won't see it at all on the game pass until the price starts to drop a little bit like when diablo 4 becomes a 40 dollars game then we might see it on the game pass i don't know i hope they put it on there soon i guess because i want more and more people playing diablo 4 and i want the community to grow but that is kind of what is going on as of right now with the blizzard microsoft deal going through and the f TC fighting it and the judge rejecting that delay and all that. And I will also host a poll over on the community tab of this channel so that you can voice your opinion on the Activision deal and all that. And if you think this is a good thing or a bad thing and be able to have some context as to how the viewers are feeling as well. So I appreciate all of you and it would mean a lot to earn your sub today if you enjoy daily Diablo 4 content. I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.